Hi there, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this week's turning project video. I hope you're all well and you have had amazingly creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I posted a turning video, mainly because I had run out of some stuff for this week's project, which is um, I'm calling copper and caramel, or caramel and copper, one or the other, but it's on a piece of burr oak um, that was very kindly given to me by Mr. Mike Walt, and I've filled all of the little holes and stuff with um, with copper powder, as you can see. Um, I used um, a copper powder and epoxy resin paste mix, um, but you'll find out. But I didn't mix enough copper into the paste in order to make it really nice and bright and shiny. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, revisit that, perhaps with um, some 30 minute epoxy resin rather than 5 minute epoxy resin, but anyway. you find out all about that in the, uh, in the video, as well as the hand sanding. Yay! Everybody loves hand sanding on, uh, <laughs> on turning projects. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the video. If you do enjoy it, please do like, share and subscribe. And if you feel so inclined, then please do leave a comment. I do my best to get back to all people, everybody who comments. So thank you very much and uh, enjoy copper and caramel. So I've got a blank that I've prepared here. Um, it's just about 11 inches long, which is 290 odd millimetres. The figure in it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, you see, this here looks very much like oak, but I'm not sure. Anyway, um, there is some absolutely stunning figure uh, in the piece, and what the plan is, is to make sort of a winged bowl. Sort of winged, anyway. Um, out of the square block with a with a small bowl in the middle here, um, flat sides, possibly some decoration running round there. Not sure yet. But and you are going to kill me. You are going to hate me. But I'm going to colour it. Not all of it, but most of it. I think you will hate me. I'm sure. So I've sanded down the sides and the ends already to 80 grit. Um, which will help, which will just give me a bit of a start when it comes to sanding it um, with the power sander a bit later. Um, so first of all, I need to get it onto the chuck. On the worm screw. There we go. Sounds like a propeller. <laughs> right. Needless to say, I've got to be really, really careful here. Right, let's um, let's get the bottom done, shall we? Right, let's get the lathe spinning. I've got the workshop door open today because it's so nice. Um, so there's going to be lots of birds and plenty of cars going by. I hope that's all right. Um, right, so let's get the bottom of this piece flattened off and see where we go from there. sort of planed off the bottom a little bit um, but I need to try and get the lathe running a bit faster so I've got to take some weight off the ends because it's not absolutely 100% balanced so I'm gonna start shaping it very very carefully um, to take some weight off the ends so I can then increase the speed of the lathe Very light cuts of course because I'm cutting air.
I've sanded down the outside and I've just left it at 80 grit for the time being um, because I've decided I have still haven't decided if I'm going to colour it or not but all of these voids and stuff are going to look absolutely stunning with some metal powders in um, but I'm running out um, and I don't want to get halfway through filling it um, and running out of um, the powder so I need to order some more powder but for the moment what I can do is turn it round in the chuck and dig out and dig out the bowl and flatten off the top and flatten off um, flatten off the top to get ooh, the um, at least the final shape done. chip out. I'll have to sand that in, or sand that out rather. Right, now bowl. I want a decent wall. How does that look? Does that look alright do you think? It's not quite in the middle, that's frustrating. No, I measured that really, really accurately as well. <sighs> oh well, nothing I can do about it now. Well there is, actually, there is something I can do about it. I can take it up to the bandsaw and just slice a little bit off this side. Which I think is what I'm going to do. It's been back to the bandsaw and I've taken off a bit and I got rid of that um, a bit of tear out as well which is good um, and then I just sanded off the sides again which means I've got to re-sand the, the edges but you know in order for the bowl to be in the middle that's what I had to do so I'm gonna I've marked off where I want the, the bowl to be and now I can start hollowing it out do that looks nice that so I'll sand that up and I'll sand the the wings actually I think the wings need a bit of decoration so I'm gonna put some concentric rings on them on there whoops Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Just going to put a little scoop in each of those, just a just a little bit. It's few days. 
days later and um, my stuff uh, it's a few days later and the stuff that I was waiting to arrive arrived yesterday um, and it was a few more um, or replenishing my supplies of the metal powders so I've got copper, bronze, brass and aluminium um, I haven't had aluminium before but I saw it so I thought I would grab it um, and I've also got the coffee grind that uh, that I use sometimes to fill uh, fill holes and stuff so that's what I'm going to do initially whether I'm going to add any colour over the top of that I don't know yet we'll have to see um, so what I'm doing is I've got the piece next to the metal powders and what I want to do is I want to find a colour that will complement and contrast <laughs> um, now bronze I think is out because the colour is too similar to the actual piece itself so I'm not going to worry about bronze aluminium when it's shiny looks amazing but I don't think it's the right the right colour for this piece um, so aluminium can go so now I'm with brass and copper now brass of course shines up a kind of a bright yellow with a sort of a, a hint of green um, if you catch my meaning so the brass is a possibility but the copper is red and there are some there's a little bit of red actually in the piece itself so I think I'm going to go with copper so yeah I'll go with copper and now what I've done here is I've got a, a, a bamboo skewer which I have fashioned a little scoop out of um, now I remember seeing somewhere an ear spoon which <laughs> frankly makes me feel sick um, but I couldn't find the ear spoon thankfully so I fashioned myself um, a little scoop out of a bamboo um, skewer so the little scoop um, there will help me get nice and precisely into the wood so let's get going um, I've got some gloves as well as well as um, thin and medium CA glue and some kitchen towel just in case of incident now I won't bore you with the whole going over the whole piece because that would just take hours um, so I'm going to start with this hole here and to start with I'm going to dribble some medium CA he said there we go I'm going to dribble some medium CA into the hole and let that soak down a little bit and start tipping it into the hole and I can just begin to see the copper powder piling up so I'll then dribble some thin CA glue into the hole which will soak nicely into the copper and then add some more little dribble of CA again that took far too long so what <laughs> so what I'm doing now is I'm doing what I did uh, a little while ago and that's mixing up a very thick paste of um, epoxy resin sorry yeah epoxy glue and um, the copper powder and then I should be able to rub that into I should be able to rub that into the the holes and get um, 
get a nice finish. Now, it needs to be thick, this mixture, um, in order to get a nice shine when it's cut and sanded. Yeah, I think this, the, the, the CA method is good for um, filling up little holes, but with a piece with as many holes as I've got here, it's just not going to work. And then I'm just going to slap it on. I can use my finger, I guess, because it's got a glove on, and then just press it. Can you see that? Oh, I'm going to need to make up some more, I think. So I'm just squeezing it into the gaps. Yeah, this is definitely a much quicker way of doing it. And hopefully it will work. Um, I'll leave that I think I'll need to leave that overnight now because I've got some other bits and pieces that I need to do so I'll come back to it tomorrow and um, continue the process joy 24 hours later um, the epoxy resin and copper mix has dried off um, and I've mounted it back on the lathe and I need to cut back um, all of the the resin on the back just to get rid of it and it will just save a load of time trying to sand it off. I mean, I'll still have to sand um, the two sides but that shouldn't be too much of a problem so I'll do the back and then I'll come round and do the front or the top and the bottom. Good. I just need to fill a few of the holes on the back which I'll do with the CA um, and then I can start sanding it. Um, I filled the, the remaining holes with, uh, with the CA and the copper powder and now I'm going to take the power drill and a, and a respirator and uh, sand the life out of it. Um, you don't need to see me doing that or much of it but I'm starting with 80 grit and I'm just literally going to sand it right down it's day three, day four um, I've sanded the outside down to uh, 240 at the moment but the battery on the drills died again so I'm going round each of the little grooves with um, with the pads or yeah with the with the pads down to down to 240. I'm currently on 120, but I I can't get into the grooves very well with the with the drill, so I'm having to do them by hand, um, which uh, is taking a little bit of time. A little while later, and I've got the whole of the piece down to 400 grit. Um, but I want to go a little bit smoother if I can and try and bring up uh, bring up the copper infill. So what I'm, I've got 600 paper, um, and I'm going to get a tiny bit of Danish oil. Oops, he said <laughs> a tiny bit. Um, and go over the whole piece, ooh that's come up nice, um, and go over the whole piece using the oil as a bit of a lubricant for the final, for the final um, sanding, if that makes sense. 
Yeah. I don't think the um, copper paste I made with the epoxy resin is quite was quite thick enough as it hasn't come up as bright as I would like. But never mind. I'm ready to start the finishing process now. Um, I went over the whole thing with the 600 and the Danish oil. I've cleaned it, I've blown out some of the uh, holes, or well, the remaining holes where the copper paste didn't go in particularly well, um, and um, cleaned it off with methylated spirits. And what I think I'm going to do with this particular piece is give it a good coat of Danish. I always use Danish oil, I love the stuff. Um, a good coat of Danish oil. And then I'll leave that to dry. Gosh, this is coming up really well. And then I'll put a sanding sealer on it, I think. The copper isn't as shiny as I was hoping, um, but that's down to the thickness. Gosh, that has come up beautifully. That's down to the the thickness of the or the, the ratio of copper powder to the epoxy resin. I've encouraged the Danish oil to go off and, and to dry a bit quicker with the hot air gun uh, and I'm not going to use a sanding sealer on it. Um, I'm going to go straight in with um, Hampshire Sheen Hampshire Sheen original because I don't want to have a massive high gloss on this piece. I just want it kind of lustrous rather than very very glossy. So I'm going to rub the Hampshire Sheen in. Don't need very much of the stuff. And then when it's dry I can give it a big buffing. Um, I'll have to use the drill again to, uh, to buff it, or certainly most of it, because, um, because of the shape of it. Now the Hampshire Sheen has dried off, it's been about five minutes or so, I can take the drill and just start to buff it up. I don't have a Beale buffing system before anybody mentions it. We're all, all finished. The Hampshire Sheen original has been has been buffed, and I'm very pleased with how it's uh, how it's turned out. Um, the copper uh, infill in the gaps hasn't quite come up um, as bright as I would have hoped, um, but that's down to trial and error of the um, the epoxy resin and the copper powder paste. Um, I was told that. Uh, you need to make a really thick paste. So I did, but clearly it wasn't quite thick enough. Um, but overall, I absolutely love how how it's turned out. And the colours and the swirls and the grain pattern and the figure in the piece are absolutely lovely. So I love the brown and I think, yeah, I'm going to call this piece copper and caramel or caramel and copper. Um, because it's just such a lovely caramel coloured piece of wood. So big thanks to Mike Walt for um, giving me the piece of wood in the first place and big thanks to you for watching. If you have enjoyed it then please do like, share and subscribe um, and if you feel so inclined then please do leave um, a comment. That's it for this week. I'll look forward to seeing you again next week for another Turning Project video. Thanks very much indeed for watching. Bye for now.